following is a presentation of TFNN. The Morning Markets Kickoff with your host, Tommy O'Brien. Now, Tommy O'Brien. Good Friday morning, everybody. I'm Tommy O'Brien coming to you live from TFNN, 906 a.m. Eastern Time Friday. We got about 24 minutes to go until the start of trading, and we have all the markets catching a bid from where we were last night, where we were at the close yesterday. Uh, negative action in the S&P across the spectrum this week coming into the close yesterday. Quite the acceleration really coming into the close most of the day. You look at the S&P yesterday, we start the day early in the trading day, about 1030, you make a high almost at 4530, we'll call it. You're talking about 50, 50 S&P points you trade from the high at about 1030 yesterday. We make a low just after the close last night. We'll call it 7 p.m. Eastern time. The low there, 4479.25. We're positive by about 19 points on the session right now. 4501 in the S&Ps. Tech stocks, a little bit of a different story. NASDAQ had been catching a bid when the markets had been faltering a little bit this week, a little bit stronger than the other indices, as has been the case. Uh, and yesterday, though, you got to sell off in the tech stocks, but we're getting most of it back so far today. You're back to where you were before that sell off at about 115 almost in the NASDAQ 100. You see bumping up against that level right now. We're talking about 66 points in the positive, almost half a percent for the tech stocks, 15,617. The Dow had tough, quite a tough week. You start things off at about 35,500. You trade down about 750 points to the lows last night. Now, interesting, you look at where we were in the Dow yesterday, right? In terms of early, early overnight action, you have the Dow at about 34,000, technically the low there, 34,776. We get within 30 or 40 points of that price level overnight. And just like that, we're back up about 200 points in the Dow, 34,921. The Russell positive as well by about nine points, 2255. We got crude catching up ahead. Look at that acceleration. Man, this crude market volatility. You could definitely be playing this on both sides of the market. Yesterday, I was talking about my program. From 9 till 11, I did the noon Eastern time update, I believe it was. And I said, man, remarkable that you got basically $2 movement down. $2 movement back up, and I didn't see it, but guess what? $2 movement back down, and then $2 movement back up, all within the span of about, we'll call it 25 hours, as that began at about 8.15 a.m. yesterday. Think about that, right? Within 24 hours, you're getting a $2 move down, $2 move up, $2 move down, and we get it all back overnight to $69.78. We're climbing towards that $70 price level in gold, uh, excuse me, in oil. Gold contract just kind of sputtering along between about 1795 and 1805. Gold's down four dollars this morning. You got silver down six pennies at 2412. Notes and bonds we got a little bit of lower price and higher yield. You got the 10 year up two basis points, 1.326 percent. We'll call it 1.33 percent in the 10 year. And let's jump over to the VIX as this market comes into the uh, opening bell with gains. We got a VIX pairing some of the action of yesterday. We're sitting at 1747 right now. All things considered, you're talking about right near record territory, putting the S&P on a daily basis. I've talked about this trend line a couple times on my program, if you've been watching. Uh, whether that starts from November 1st, pretty well-defined channel line. When you look at the upper boundary line matching up, the lower boundary lows correlating to where we were in March, where we began in November, those lows ticking across pretty, pretty, just awesome how they line up. Uh, whether you look at the June pullback, the July pullback, the August pullback, now we're getting a slight September pullback. Uh, in the S&Ps, you're talking about a price level of about 44.60. We're right near that level on the low hand side of the S&Ps. NASDAQ, a little bit of a different story. You go from where we were in November 1st, where the market really takes off. You make a low in March, you make a low in May, you take off to the top side. NASDAQ kind of sputtering over the top here. We're talking about how many trading days is that? We're talking about eight trading days that you've had the NASDAQ just kind of chopping around above 15,600 or so. We're sitting at 15,617 right now in those tech stocks. All right, what else we got going on? Uh, let's talk a little macro here. More strategists say a storm is brewing in the U.S. stock market. Um, and it doesn't mean, folks, that the economy's in trouble. It just means valuations in the stock market are getting a little bit out of control here. Uh, global stocks may be entering a period of turmoil. 
quote unquote, is one of the quote strategies from almost all of the top Wall Street banks have come out this week with a nervous message about the U.S. stocks. I think it was Goldman that started things off with a revision of GDP. But the latest is uh, Deutsch and Goldman Sachs. There you go. Echo earlier announcement. Maybe it was Morgan Stanley, Citigroup, Bank of America. And um, the risk that the correction is hard is growing. That's a Deutsche Bank equity strategist, um, including Binky Chata. Valuation corrections don't always require market pullbacks, but they do constrain returns. You know, take that for what you will, folks. This is the valuation on the S&P 500 remain elevated. This is a price to earnings ratio. You're talking about quite an acceleration here. You back things up to where we were in 2010, um, 11. You're talking about 20 to 22 times. I think that number represents in terms of, I think that's a forward number potentially even on the um, price to earnings ratio in the S&P. Uh, a couple of quotes they have in there from, from the analyst, equity valuations at the market level are historically extreme in almost any metric. You know, I love combining fundamentals and technicals, folks. And you look at some of the, fun, you know, technicals, you look at the NASDAQ 100, I tell you, the run this thing has had, even from May, folks, you go from 13,000 to 15,616, you're talking about a run of 2,600 points. The NASDAQ is up 20% just since May, the NASDAQ 100. Think about that, okay? Now, the NASDAQ had lagged behind. When you take a look at the daily, we'll line things up to where we were calendar year. Uh, you were flat from January to May in the NASDAQ 100. You compare things on the S&P 500, um, find the year end, here's our year. You go from where you were in January to May, right? January, you kick it off at 37.50 about. You find May on this chart, the lows there, you were up at above 4,000, okay? So you were up almost 10% coming into that number. The NASDAQ has really accelerated from that May acceleration, but we were in, we were flat coming into that. So, I mean, in that time, you know what's happened in terms of if you've been watching the market company like Apple has gone from a price point of 123 to 154. You've had Google shares even in that time. Uh, you look where we are. May, you were trading at 2213. We're pushing 2900 right now. Uh, Microsoft, another big one during that time. You have a run in Microsoft from 238 to 297. Some of these just a healthy pullback. You see Microsoft chopping around above 300, that or thereabouts. Uh, healthy pullback, 280. That's a that's a $17 drop in Microsoft shares. You talk about a healthy pullback in Apple. Um, what are we looking at? Let's put it right just from June. Just from where we've been in June, talking about potential 382 retracements, I like to kind of keep my eye on. I mean, that's totally in play. And look where it lines up. It lines up to just kind of the lower boundary of this. Maybe that's an area of support, 144.50 about. Call it 145 in Apple. You can see a pullback. That's a $9 pullback in Apple. I've talked about it. I'm pretty sure we got about 16.7 billion shares outstanding. Let's pull it up. Oh, we got to get to the fundamentals tab. It's loading 16.5 billion shares. You do nine. Nine there. You're talking about $135 billion market cap hit just if Apple pulls back to this 382 retracement. Um, valuations are just crazy right now, especially on some of the tech stocks. Uh, going down the line on some of the quotes here, because I think it's important to keep your eye on it, folks, especially if you're you know, a short-term trader, long-term trader, I guess, goes as both ways. You got to be aware of the valuations because you can't stretch the valuations forever. It's almost like we've turned in. I, I heard an analyst talk about last week saying, you know, everybody almost thinks that the only way that stocks go down is because of the Fed. And that's just not the case at all. Stocks can go down even without the Fed, let alone any type of taper. Stay tuned, folks. We'll be right back. Golden ratios give shape to everything in our world. Represented in the Fibonacci sequence, these special numbers define the patterns that make up our universe. Not even markets can escape the omnipotence of these ratios. Larry Pesavento is a 45-year market veteran who has published nearly a dozen books on the powerful patterns we find in nature and their relationships with the ever-elusive markets. Larry's newsletter, Fibonacci 24-7, will teach you to harness the power of these natural golden ratios in order to create successful trades. Fibonacci 24-7 is designed to teach the tools you need to identify and act on these undeniable and reoccurring patterns. Sign up for Larry's newsletter, Fibonacci 24-7, and you will also receive free access to his trading webinar, Trading Strong Trending Markets. Try out Larry's newsletter risk-free. All of TFNN's newsletters come with a 30-day money-back guarantee, TFNN, educating investors. 
What's separating you from the most successful men and women on Wall Street? That's right, information. Having all the information gives us the perspective we need to place the right trades at the right time. The TAS Profile Scanner is the premier market profile-based scanner. Powered by its acclaimed TAS proprietary algorithms, this feature-rich scanner instantly filters over 2,500-plus global financial markets, such as stocks, ETFs, commodities, futures, and Forex. This powerful suite of tools leverages instant trade filtering and strategy formulation to show you emerging trades before they happen. For a limited time, you can save $100 off your first month by using the promo code UPGRADE. And you still get a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have nothing to risk. Level the playing field with the TAS Profile Scanner, which you can find under the Services tab at TFNN.com. Sign up today. Sharpening your skills as an investor is like getting better at playing a musical instrument. You have to practice, sure, but you also need excellent instruction from experts. At TFNN, you'll get advice and guidance from the authority in technical market analysis. And it's not just dry, tedious text either. TFNN airs live financial content streamed live on TFNN.com and TFNN's YouTube channel with Tiger TV. Live every market day from 8.30 a.m. to 4 p.m. Eastern for free. Each host is an experienced trader and gives their take on the market while taking calls and questions live from around the world. From the moment the market opens until the closing bell sounds, Tiger TV has eight different shows with expert hosts to help you make the right moves with your money. Watch online at TFNN.com or on TFNN's YouTube channel and become the investor you were born to be. TFNN, educating investors. Welcome back, folks. We have the S&Ps up about 19 points. All the markets near the session highs. When we're zooming in on a five-minute chart, uh, NASDAQ 100 had been higher about 810 this morning. You're talking about within about 10 to 12 points of where that high were. S&P, you're talking about highs in the pre-market of 4504. You look where we were, 4.30 a.m., up at that price level at about 8 a.m., right near that price level right now, 4502. Uh, continuing part of what I was talking about there, if you jump back to, I mean, some of the quotes here, just to make your, allow you to wrap your head around some of the valuations here. Um, Andrew Sheets, he's a cross asset strategist at Morgan Stanley, not familiar with one of these, any of these, ad, uh, excuse me, analysts, um, but they make some decent points. We're gonna have a period where data is gonna be weak in September at the time when you have a heightened risk of Delta variant and school reopening. I agree with those risks, folks. And what I find so perplexing is that the market, hasn't addressed any of the misses it's had. Now, on a three-month basis, averaged out, we're averaging about 700,000 jobs added for non-farm payrolls. That's a good number. But we had a much higher average expected before the non-farm payroll that we got for the month of August. And basically, the market just shakes it off and says, that's okay, we were just wrong, we're just gonna push back those jobs. You can only do that for so long. There should probably be some calculation that the further you delay it, the greater the probability that it's not just a delay and that that delay will persist longer than the market is anticipating. But when the market just keeps going up, even though those misses happen, there's a huge probability, in my opinion, that the market isn't pricing in the risk that it should, that it's just not a delay and that it could be uh, a, at least a delay longer than the market would like. Um, Savita Subramanian, Sub Subramanian? Supermanian, I think I got it. You head of U.S. Equity and Quantitative Strategy at Bank of America. S&P 500 has essentially turned into a 36-year zero-coupon bond. If you look at the duration of the market today, it's basically longer duration than it's ever been. That's what scares me is their quote. The threat is that any move higher in the cost of capital via interest rates, credit spreads, equity risk, premium, uh, that's basically going to be a huge knock on the market relative to the sensitivity we've seen in the past. And I would agree, we've seen the freakouts um, when the yields spike higher. That's when we've had some of the NASDAQ 100 pullbacks. Folks, I think yields are going to be higher in the next year. I'm not sure how some of the big tech stocks are going to handle that just for a period of relative volatility 
after we've climbed higher in pretty remarkable fashion. I mean, you have to keep in mind, it's almost hard to keep in mind that we just had the NASDAQ 100 trading at a price point of 6,600 merely a year and a half ago. 6,600. We might reach 16,600 by, by the year end. Let alone you came into COVID when tech stocks were the king of the world already with the NASDAQ 100, 9,700. We're trading at 15,600. Take COVID out of the equation, folks, and you shouldn't because the tech stocks have benefited dramatically. And I know this is a big, like, fundamental, um, try and wrap your head around it. But you have to try and remember that prior to COVID, the NASDAQ 100 was at 9,700. I mean, you, you wanna see what type of move is possible just going from pre-COVID levels to this run up? A 382 from the 9,700. And you know, this isn't how I would set a Fibonacci because that's not the trend line. But it is important to remember that over a year and a half, we've risen from 9,700 to 15,700. A 382 retracement of that would bring it down to 13,500. You'd get a 2,100 point haircut. Folks, that's not out of the realm. That would just bring us back to where we were trading at uh, in May, right? Just kind of this uh, consolidation area in May, 13,400. And, and the, the multiples that you're dealing with, all right? I've talked about it. I talked about it on Zoom when they came out with their numbers. Zoom is a strong company. We have some Zoom in my, my newsletter, Rocket Equities and Options, folks. I encourage you to check it out under the newsletter tab at TFNN. Um, all the newsletters we do, 30-day money-back guarantee out there. And Zoom, it's just the multiples they're dealing with. I mean, they're dealing with some crazy multiples. When you look at a company, all right, I'm waiting for the fundamentals tab. We're talking about a company right now that's valued at $88 billion. All right, I think they're doing about $4 billion in sales a year. So that means to get, you know, if you bought 100% of that company, to get that money back, you would have to take every single dollar in sales they had for the next 22 years before you were paid back the capital that you put in to buy that company. Now, the reason for that is that you should have some big time growth in that equity. But even when a company is profitable, even when they're making money and they're growing, sometimes the valuations on the multiples get a little out of whack and they're important to keep in mind because people would say, how can, how can a strong company like that pull back, right? Kevin Hinks always has a great quote, right? At, 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 a, at a certain price, at any, you know, any equity, at a certain price, I'll be a buyer. At a certain price, I'll be a seller because even great companies get overbought. Even bad companies get oversold is the other side of that. Um, so keep your eye on this because I think the story is going to persist. And I think that we will see rising rates at some point in the near term future. And the risk versus reward ratio that we're dealing with with the market that I just said, the NASDAQ 100 goes from under 10,000 to 15,700. That's going from the pre-COVID highs. Okay, if you take the fear that pushed that index down to 6,600 and you just go from 9,700, a pullback brings the NASDAQ 100 down 2,000 points from where we're trading at right now. Um, and you look at an interest rate environment where we have rising costs, folks. I mean, we're seeing it across the board in terms of the rent prices that are going up. Uh, my dad sent me an article talking about rent prices yesterday going up record territory in the Tampa market. 20% you're talking about. If you've got somebody paying 1,500 bucks for an apartment, that means that apartment now is $1,800. That is $3,600 on a yearly basis after tax income, right? Yes, I had to wrap my, I had to say, wait a second, is that right? That sounds like a lot of money. Yes, that is $3,600 after tax income that a rent just went up for somebody that was paying $1,500 a month in rent prior to this raise, $1,500, probably uh, in the, maybe in the median area of rent, as in they obviously go lower, they obviously go much higher if you're dealing with a larger household, whatever it is, $1,500 seems pretty reasonable. Now that reasonable uh, rent is $1,800. Point being, folks, inflation, that's a 20% rise in a family's rent. Now we can write off rent, right? We're trying to write off oil prices as they're at $70. We're trying to write off food costs that have some supply chain problems going on that maybe not persist. Point being, you see all those numbers, folks, inflation, it's definitely possible. And if you see the type of rises in interest rates that may be possible over the next year, um, that's going to force the Fed's hand. They're not going to wait forever if you get those types of rises and rent is not going to pull back. Those are leases signed. You know, you sign somebody for $1,800 and you had your last tenant at $1,500, you're not going back to $1,500 anytime soon. It's not happening probably ever. Um, that lease is signed for a year. My guess is it never goes below $1,800 ever again. 
And so there's a 20% hit to a family's rental income, which is one of the largest bills you face. And when you look at the median income for a family of four, you just take $4,000 almost after tax out of that money. That is a huge, huge inflationary factor, let alone the factors we're dealing with across the board, whether it's cars, um, and I imagine cars will pull back, but just salaries going up, right? Wages going up, even on the miss on the jobs number last month, we had wages going up. Um, so think about all those cases and how they play out on a risk reward basis. Doesn't mean the comeback is coming, any, the pullback's coming anytime soon, but man, valuations are high when we're coming into a dicey period of time. And now you're even seeing a lot of analysts kind of pointing it out in this market. You know, and there's always the potential for tax selling. All right. I think that people who are in the top stratosphere of uh, income in the U.S., they should pay a little bit more taxes. I do. But that's not going to stop them from selling and getting ahead of the curve, which is possible as we end the year 2021 with some big gains in those markets. Stay tuned, folks. We'll be right back for the open. Are you having fun trading the markets, but having trouble finding like-minded individuals to discuss your trading and investment ideas with? Become an apex predator in the trading market and join the Tiger's Den Trading Room only at TFNN.com. The Tiger's Den is an exclusive trading room where successful traders from around the world come to exchange trades and ideas. Join the den and surround yourself with the sharpest minds in the trading world. Subscribers to the Tiger's Den are also the first to have their questions answered live on air and can privately chat with our TFNN hosts live during their shows. Interact with other Tigers and Tigresses as they share trading ideas, news analysis, and discuss the market action all trading day. Subscribe to the Tiger's Den risk-free with our 30-day money-back guarantee and become part of the TFNN trading community. TFNN, educating investors. You could be making money off the stock market. And if you're already making money off the stock market, you could be making a lot more. Check out TFNN and Tiger TV and get expert investing advice to give you the power to control your financial future. Go to TFNN.com and find the newsletter for you. Whether you're into trading gold, metals, futures, currencies, or options, you'll get advice and analysis to help you seriously get ahead. TFNN also features trading services with a 30-day money-back guarantee for new subscribers, as well as TFNN's Tiger Den Trading Room, trading software, and educational webinars for all trading levels and make sure you check out tiger tv for free on tfnn.com or tfnn's youtube channel for live financial content from 8 30 a.m to 4 p.m eastern on market days stop watching on the sidelines while other people get rich and become the investor you were born to be tfnn educating investors TFNN is excited about our new software charting program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts. In collaboration with Tom O'Brien and using his best-selling book, The Art of Timing the Trade, Your Ultimate Trading Mastery System, David White has programmed an outstanding piece of software that will complement any trader's methodology. Using this first-of-its-kind program, The Art of Timing the Trade Chart allows you to scan thousands of stocks for Fibonacci formation setups, including Gartley's, ABC's, Butterflies, and much more. The Art of Timing the Trade Charts is designed to help you when scouring the markets for stocks just beginning to form the trading patterns that many investors spend days, weeks, or even months searching to find. And right now, we're offering licenses available at only $79 a month. We are so confident that you're going to love this new charting software that will even give you a 30-day unconditional money-back guarantee. Don't miss out on this incredible new piece of software. Get your copy of The Art of Timing the Trade Charts today by visiting TFNN.com. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Welcome back, folks. We got markets open and we got markets catching a bit even on the open right now. S&P is up about 24 points. NASDAQ 100 up 93 points. You see the action in the tech stocks. We got highs yet.
yesterday, you're talking about a price point of 15,675. So we're still about 30 points off of where we were yesterday uh, at about the same time just after the open. You see the pop we got at 930, only lasted about 15 minutes. We'll see where the weight goes today, but NASDAQ up 100 points even. We got the S&Ps, we're talking about up 25 points, Dow up 204 right now. Now, let's jump around, jump down the line, excuse me, with some of the stocks that are moving on their numbers. This morning, Affirm. Boy, this stock's bent on fire and they're continuing the run. Let's see how they open today. Pulling back a bit, but still up 16%. Now, we pull up the daily on this thing. This thing was just trading August 27th at $66. You jump higher on the news that they will be teaming up with Amazon to offer uh, buy now, pay later, or buy now, pay over installment plan type plans. You pull back to 90, you get a pop up 16% on their numbers. Um, buy now, pay later companies revenue easily topped estimates, active merchant numbers more than quant quintupled, and a firm issued a positive outlook as well. Uh, Toyota, now they, I think they talked about 40% cut recently, Toyota was talking about because of chips, cut its annual production target by 300,000 vehicles as factories in Vietnam and Malaysia were hit by the spread of the COVID-19 and ongoing computer chip shortage. Toyota, see, they're actually positive pre-market, maybe with the market up about two tenths percent. There's their action. Uh, they were up to about 182, but pulling back a bit. What else we got going on? Uh, Wells Fargo, yeah, they get another quarter billion dollar fine, $250 million by regulators who said the bank has not made sufficient progress in solving ongoing issues in its mortgage business. Regulators had first identified those issues in a 2018 order. Folks, it's going to be 2022 in a few months. Talk about four years. Um, Shame on them in a big way. Uh, Wells Fargo, you're up 1.3% with the market right now. Jumping over to the banks, you got the banks trading higher. J uh, Bank of America up 8 tenths percent right now. JP Morgan up about 7 tenths percent right now. Continuing down the line, uh, Dave and Buster's out with their numbers. They were positive pre-market. Talking about retail in terms of restaurants, uh, restaurant gaming, they kind of merged the gap there in terms of social. Quarterly earnings, a buck oh seven a share. The market was only looking for 58 cents. Restaurant and arcade chain's revenue beat the forecast, said it continues to see sign of recovery in its business, expects that to continue. Barring any significant COVID-related downturn, that's quite an if to throw on the end. But nonetheless, I mean, there's, there's some COVID out there right now. I wonder how they're doing, particularly in Florida. That would tell you how, maybe in some other states, although... Shutdown is a little bit more possible in other states than Florida, as we're all aware. Um, but Dave & Buster's play is their symbol. Yeah, up 14.4%. Look at that pop on their numbers last night. They were at about $35 last night. You take a look at the three-year weekly. You got highs earlier this year, though. $51, still well off those highs, man. Talk about a pullback in this equity, man. Uh, you get back all the COVID losses in terms of getting right back up to about $50. And the market says, yeah, not so quick as we figure out that it wasn't exactly the summer that we imagined it would be with the persistence of the Delta variant out there. All right, jumping down the line and continuing to see what else we got going on. Just one second as I pull this up and that. Uh, what else do I wanna talk about? Uh, take two. They're gonna delay a new version of its Grand Theft Auto video game by four months, saying it wants additional time to further polish the final products. They maintained its prior full year outlook, but shares down about 2%. Two, two Take two is their symbol. Yeah, down about 2%. Market does not like a delay. Four months, nothing short um, there. You've given back and you're coming right into this area we had in November. The lows of that area, 151. What do we touch at today? We touch it today, 152.22. Maybe that's where it finds a bid. I mean, we're right back to where we had some nice support there towards the end of last year for take two. Okay, let's see what else I got pulled up in terms of talking about stories out there today. We'll talk about a little inflation in terms of inf inflation. Producer price, uh, producer inflation accelerated in August. Wholesale prices rose a record 8.3% from a year ago. I mean, this is one of the stories I was reading this morning that kind of shaped what I was gonna talk about for the fundamental aspect of potentially rising yields um, in the face of markets at multiples that are getting kind of silly, and even in some Wall Street analysts' estimations. Uh, producer price index increased 0.7% in August from a month ago. The Dow estimate was 0.6, 8.3% from a year ago. That's the biggest record since 2010. The move showed that inflationary pressures are likely to persist. 
that came following a 7.8% move higher in July. So we get 8.3% uh, year over year for the month of August. That follows 7.8% in July. That's actually heating up month over um, month on a yearly basis. Excluding food, energy, and trade services, final demand prices increased 0.3% for the month. The market, though, was only looking for a point, was looking for 0.5%. Still, that left core PPI up 6.3% from a year ago, also the largest record increase. But the market had been looking for a little bit hotter number. Core only coming in 0.3, the number 0.5. But you got to exclude food, energy, and trade services. Um, final demand for services rose 0.7% for the month thanks to the 1.5% gain in trade services or the margins received by wholesalers and retailers. Transportation and warehousing costs on the rise 2.8%. About one third of the overall gain came from health, beauty, and optical goods. Jumped 7.8 percent. Prices related to outpatient hospital care held back gains, falling 1.5. Such a divergence here in the numbers, right? In terms of the rises versus the decreases. Um, but when you look at, you know, tentative trends in terms of transitory, I guess is the word everyone's using, right? A third of the overall gain from health, beauty, and optical goods. I'm not sure that's a transitory rise. I mean, maybe health, beauty, and optical goods are just going to be higher, and they're not going to pull those prices back, even if the supply disruptions or the input good costs that are driving those do pull back. You just might see businesses hold those costs, folks, because we have wages already rising, right? If you're paying employees and you think you can go back to a year and a half ago prices when that employee, let's just say they live in Tampa, now has a 20% increase in the rent they're paying, those are factors that are going to influence everything, folks. When you have families, anybody paying 20% higher rents across the board over just a year and a half ago. Keep that in mind. There's no way that people are going to be paying 20% higher in rent, let alone all this other stuff that's going in there, right? You want to buy a used car? You're paying crazy higher. You want to buy some, some beauty goods? You're paying 8% higher. Um, they're all going to persist to push those prices higher as we're seeing. And I'm not sure they're going to be as transitory as some others think they may be. All right. What else we got going on? Why not? Let's talk a little football here. Rem uh, quite a kickoff to the season. Of course, I'm biased in a big way. Uh, Tom Brady, the king of the comebacks, the king, the goat in entirely, uh, throws four touchdown passes. Two of those to Gronk. That was numbers 99 and 100 to one uh, Gronkowski. Uh, and they have a comeback win. Great game. Did not catch the final. I was asleep, folks. Uh, I wake up early. That What that game finish at? Probably like 11.30 or something. I think it started about 8, 8.30. Watch the first half. Great game of football. Good to have football back. Um, Cowboys, man, kick a field goal to go ahead by one point with a minute left. Brady comes on the field, marches Tampa down the field. They kick a field goal, and they get it down. Pretty remarkable action over there. Um, we'll talk a little bit as we wrap it up. I got uh, the New York Yankees doing for the, the first something the, for the first time since 1924, and it's not a, not a good thing. We'll talk a little bit with sports as well when we get back, and we'll look back to the market. Stay tuned, folks. We'll be right back. Are you in the market for buying or selling real estate in the Bay Area, including the surrounding St. Petersburg, Tampa, and Clearwater markets? Tiger Real Estate LLC is a firm that has extensive experience in the Tampa Bay Area. Whether you're looking to sell your current property for maximum value, or you're in the market for a second home or investment property, Tiger Realty has the experience across all areas of real estate in the Tampa Bay area to help buyers and sellers make the most informed decisions across all price levels. From the price you should be paying per square foot in certain up and coming areas to the type of cash flow investment properties are capable of creating, Tiger Real Estate can help you make the best decision when it comes to all areas of the market. Before you make one of the biggest decisions of your financial future, call Tiger Real Estate LA. LC today at 727-329-8322 or email us at tiger at tfnn.com. That's 727-329-8322. Call us today. The technology around us is changing every day. With so much happening, it can seem impossible to keep up with all the information. David White's investment newsletter, The Technology Insider, is designed to give you all the information you need to understand the technology that shapes today's markets and tomorrow's future. David White has made his living staying on the cutting edge of technology. His weekly newsletter will give you specific recommendations for value tech stocks, 
as well as entry prices, target prices, and stops to set for each trade. Dave delivers his weekly newsletters every Friday with updates throughout the week. You can get the Technology Insider at TFNN.com for only $37.50. Sign up for David's newsletter, The Technology Insider, and get an inside look at everything the technology sector has to offer. Try it risk-free today with our 30-day money-back guarantee. TFNN, educating investors. Will the S&P 500 continue to climb? For bold trades on U.S. large-cap stocks in either direction, trade SPXL, SPUU, or SPXS. Direction's daily S&P 500 bull and bear leveraged ETFs. Direction leveraged ETFs. An investor should carefully consider a fund's investment objective, risks, charges, and expenses before investing. A fund's prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about Direction shares. To obtain a fund's prospectus and summary prospectus, call 866-476-7523 or visit directioninvestments.com. A fund's prospectus and summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors such as traders and active investors. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. Welcome back, folks. We have the S&Ps kind of sitting right where we started off the market action. You trade higher to 45.10. We've pulled back a bit. You have the NASDAQ up more than 102 points right now, 15,653 for the NASDAQ 100. Dow giving back some of those gains, actually about 100 points off the highs it had this morning. We were up about 250. You almost reached 35,000. This is a 15-minute bar. We got a high at 34,997. We're exactly 100 points off that high right now, 34,897. And the Russell positive by six points, had been as high as about 2260, was at 2266 in the pre-market uh, at about 4.30 a.m. this morning. All right, jumping back to some more stories. We're talking about interesting opinion piece out here as well. Uh, talking about uh, John Authors, not familiar, uh, but a Bloomberg opinion writer, talking about a momentous shift is taking shape in the labor market. Now, again, we got a theme going on today. I'm bringing it back to inflation, the factors that are going into this economy, all right? Faster wage growth for the low skilled has implications for economic growth, inflation, and Joe Biden's political prospects. Again, an opinion piece, but what I wanted to look at in here in particular is check out the wage rising for the low skilled, exceeding those for high skilled by the most on record, folks. Now you have uh, the white is the Atlanta Fed wage growth tracker for low skilled, and this is year over year increase percentage wise. Okay, we go from about one to six. I'm going to expand this chart so we can see it in completion. You have blue, the wage growth for high skilled, okay, mid price, um, and that's the mid price on that average wage growth. Now you look in terms of you back it up to the 90s to the 2000s, you had high skilled gaining at six, you had low skilled gaining under five. You look at uh, where we were in the peak of 2008, you had high skilled at just under five, you had lows at under four. And uh, really things collapse, of course, uh, to the pullback of 2010. You come into COVID at a time when we were basically close to merging that. And just like that, things have really accelerated as you now have a flip over in price. And Folks, you're going to need that. Is is you need that to happen when you have rent prices rising 20%, okay? Because most of the time, high skilled workers, there's going to be a huge competition for talent, for human capital out there in a big way. Um, but there's also a competition for low skilled wages in the same way because people aren't going to be able to make the same type of money if they're paying 20% higher rents. I mean, we're going to see this play out over the next two months. There's been a lot of debate about the unemployment benefits expiring September 6th that they were holding lazy people back that would rather take free money. 
We know that's happening in some capacity, okay? But is it a big enough variable that everyone's saying it has been the huge impediment to jobs coming back? We're gonna find out in two or three months. Those jobs don't come crushing back in a big way. It was not as big of a factor as some may have thought. Maybe the factor is, is that people aren't just gonna come back to the same job they were at a year and a half ago for the same amount of income. Um, and you say, you know, the argument against that is, well, they have to, people can't just go hungry. You know, there's a lot of uh, soul searching over the last year and a half, folks. Uh, people can make do in certain situations with maybe not spending their life doing something they can't stand for an income that barely allows them to just move day to day. You know, you got kids in your house, you gotta take care of them, you gotta do that, I understand. You get the job done, you get out there and work and make some money to take care of your family. Um, but there's a lot of people that have that option right now that just kinda were through going through the daily grind, I think, just letting days pass. And when you have 20% higher rent, they might say, you know what, I'm not going back to the same job at the same pay if I had a low paying job, if I'm not gonna be able to even pay the bills that I was able to pay then. When I get rent prices up 20%, I use car prices up, you know, et cetera. I got food prices up, et cetera. Um, so we'll see how it plays out. But for the third month in a row, wages for the low skilled have risen faster than the high skilled there. Um, and that's how, that's quite a break from the trends we've had recently. You look where we were over the last 30 to 40 years almost, um, stretching back to 97. So what is that, 20, 24 years, um, almost 25 years. Um, and early in 2010, it looks like, was the one time you had that number cross as the market was really cascading to lower numbers in a big way. That's something to keep your eye on yet again. All right, I said we're going to get back to a uh, little sports. Just interesting, even in probability. So the Yankees are on a little bit of a tough slide. Um, they have, of course, I'm a Red Sox fan, so we'll troll those Yankees fans out there a little bit. Um, but for the first time since 1924, they never held a lead, a lead in the four-game series they just had with the Jays. They've played 1,250 series of four games or more, and at least once during any of the four games, they've had a lead. Um, they've been in a tough skid in a big way when you look at their numbers, and I think they have them down there. Yes, they've lost six straight and 10 of 12. Um, so they're in a slump for sure, and I think they're just one game out now or one game ahead. Yeah, uh, they also pulled within half a game. So they lost this series to the Blue Jays, and the Blue Jays are now within half a game of New York for the final AL wild card on Thursday night with a 6-4 win. They capped a four-game sweep. We're coming into October um, in baseball. The Rays are on fire this year. Tampa Sports on fire. It's a bummer, though, folks. Uh, they cannot put anybody in those seats, and it really doesn't have to do with COVID. Uh, we got a great Bucks organization, of course, uh, champions. We got a great, you know, Tampa Bay Lightning organization in terms of the fan base, let alone their champions as well. The Rays had quite a run last year. There is just no support for that team in this in this area, folks. And I hate to say it, we don't deserve uh, a baseball team when they can put six, eight thousand players, uh, excuse me, people in the stands out there. Um, the players deserve more than that, you know. And I haven't been to a game this year. I'm not helping it either. But you know, most stadiums are filling with like twenty-seven thousand people right now. And Tampa can barely put eight, six to 8,000 people in there when they got a team that's crushing it on their way to the playoffs. Unfortunate, but that's where they sit right now. All right, let's jump around to some of the FANG stocks, see how they're trading this morning. Amazon shares up about a third of percent. Now, we get the NASDAQ 100 up six tenths percent right now. S&P's up a third of percent, and you get the Dow up two tenths percent. We jump over to Microsoft shares. Microsoft up about a third as well. Apple shares this morning. Apple is such a, a rocket ship, up seven tenths this morning. We jump over to Google. Google up half a percent. Uh, let's jump to some of the other stocks I like to take a look at, even retail. McDonald's in the food sector up six tenths percent. We'll jump to some of the biggest retailers out there. Walmart down two tenths percent. We got Target shares up about a half a percent so far this morning. Some of my favorite stocks out there. Disney having quite a week. Uh, giving back some of the overnight gains. Disney's flat to 185.68 so far this morning. I've talked about Zoom. Zoom shares up 2.2 percent. Look at that pop on the open there. Zoom trading up. And this is where, folks, you know, you make trades. You obviously can be wrong, um, but it's a nice acceleration. Now, I'm going to put this on a five-year daily so I can encompass the full acceleration that this really had when you skyrocketed. I remember their earnings call last September, folks, when this thing skyrocketed higher. You gap away to the tune of you start off that day, August 31st at 3.04. The next day, you make a high of 4.78. Folks, that's almost $200. You hear that? You go from 300 to 4.78. Did you hear that again? 
And then what happens? You fill the entire gap back in May. You trade higher to 400 again. This thing accelerates lower to a price of about 294. Um, and that is where we got into this equity, folks. Looking for an acceleration from that. And we've gotten about an eight to ten dollar pop, depending on where we got in after that drop. We're up at 302. Um, and I've talked about it. You're gonna have some volatility in this equity, but man, it's nice being in a growth equity that makes money, is growing, is profitable, um, nice margins. Yeah, they're dealing with some big multiples, um, but they are going nowhere, folks. Zooming is here to stay in the future, and even if they're uh, waning some of that growth, that's why you had that pullback from that last year. Stay tuned, folks. We'll be right back to finish up the show. Sharpening your skills as an investor is like getting better at playing a musical instrument. You have to practice, sure, but you also need excellent instruction from experts. At TFNN, you'll get advice and guidance from the authority in technical market analysis. And it's not just dry, tedious text either. TFNN airs live financial content streamed live on TFNN.com and TFNN's YouTube channel with Tiger TV. Live every market day from 8.30 a.m. to 4 p.m. Eastern. For free, each host is an experienced trader and gives their take on the market while taking calls and questions live from around the world. From the moment the market opens until the closing bell sounds, Tiger TV has eight different shows with expert hosts to help you make the right moves with your money. Watch online at TFNN.com or on TFNN's YouTube channel and become the investor you were born to be. TFNN, educating investors. Markets can rise and fall like the tides. Subscribe to Basil Chapman's newsletter, The Opening Call, and you too can ride the wave. Basil Chapman is an authority in technical analysis. His Chapman Wave trading system has been helping traders identify trends and capitalize on momentum in the markets since 1984. TFNN invites you to test Basil's proprietary Chapman Wave trading methodology with a monthly subscription to the opening call newsletter for only $149. Your subscription to the opening call comes with a 30-day money-back guarantee, as well as daily market updates on key indexes, stocks, and commodities. Ride the wave! Sign up for the opening call risk-free today. Are you looking for a secured investment which pays you on a monthly basis? The Tiger First Mortgage Program may be the program for you. The best rate on a five-year CD in the country right now, according to Bankrate.com, is paying 1% per year or $1,000 per $100,000 invested. The Tiger First Mortgage Program pays 7% per year, paid monthly, on secured, high-value, buildable properties in St. Petersburg, Florida. The investment is for four years, paying 7% per year or $7,000 per $100,000 invested. Your investment is secured by high-value real estate in St. Petersburg, Florida. Your investment can be anywhere from $100,000 to $500,000. Do you want to make $1,000 per year on $100,000 invested or $7,000 per year on a secured Tiger First Mortgage? The Tiger First Mortgage Program may be just the program for you. The Tiger First Mortgage Program pays 7% per year paid monthly. For more information, you can call 877-518-9190. That's 877-518-9190. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Welcome back, folks. We're 24 minutes into trading, and right now we got action in both directions. Look at this S&P right now. S&P up only seven points. We almost made 45.10 right there on the open, 45.09.25. You get back 19 points in the span of about 25 minutes since we opened. Tech stock's holding up relatively well right now. We're up 91.6 tenths percent. Dow giving back 200 plus points on the open. Watch out, folks, and the Russell is in negative territory. You're off 15 points right there. You jump over to the commodities, crude, up about a dollar forty, gold's down four dollars right now, and you have notes and bonds. Uh, pretty tame action considering, but market's selling off a little bit right now. Uh, as they're saying, 
over there in the YouTube Tigers den. Are we talking about uh, a race to the red? It's possible, folks. I only have about two minutes left of my program, but we could be in the red by the time the S&Ps finish off that show. Uh, we're six points in the green right now, but the tech stocks, as I say, holding up well. NASDAQ up 85 points right now. Amazon shares up about four tenths percent. Apple shares, look at Apple holding up so well, up about three quarters percent right there. Microsoft shares barely in the green, up by about tenth. Google shares so far this morning up five tenths percent or half a percent, we'll say. We jump to social media, Facebook getting a pop up 1.4 percent. Twitter shares up eight tenths percent. Snap shares up seven tenths percent as well. All right, let's take a look at the VIX as this market oscillates in both directions. Yeah, VIX catching a little bit of a bid from 17. We almost hit 18, just like that, back in no time. And Bitcoin shares, Bitcoin shares, Bitcoin this morning. Remarkable, we've just been hovering right at around that 45,000 price point, right? You come into the short week at 53,000. El Salvador, um, they push out uh, Bitcoin for the first time in terms of recognizing it. Look at those 618s, folks. Keep the 382s on your radar. Keep the 618s on your radar. Doesn't mean they're always gonna happen, but they're great points to kind of set your trade, put your stop on the other side. You know if you're wrong right away, and sometimes you get some quick reversals on these numbers in a big way of those 382s. All right, folks, thanks so much for starting your day with me. Stay tuned. We got our man Basil Chapman. He's up with the Tiger Technicians Hour next. Fax Market at 11. Larry Pesavento, Steve Rhodes, Dave White, Tom O'Brien, all this afternoon on Friday. We got a two-way market right now. S&P's positive by 10. NASDAQ positive by 95. Stay tuned, folks. Basil's coming back. He's live right now in three minutes. Have a great Friday.